Hi, welcome back. In our previous video, we were taking a look at radius and interval of convergence. Now, in the first question example we looked at, we were only looking for the radius of convergence. In the second video, we were looking for the radius and the interval. And we said the interval here was just going to be x equals 0 because we, when we try to find the radius, we got a false statement. Infinity is not less than 1. In this next question, we're now going to take a look at the full force of radius and interval of convergence. So just like before, what we want to find is we want to find the center. We want to find the radius. And we want to find the interval. So we're going to come back and do all these. Now the center is really easy. We talked about this before in the last video. We're just looking at our tail. That's just x to the n. This is really kind of like saying x to the x minus c to the n, where c is my center. And since I'm not adding or subtracting anything to x, our center is just going to be 0. To find the radius, we are going to use, again, our ratio test. Remember, the ratio test says if we take the limit as n goes to infinity, if that ratio is less than 1, this series will converge. So we're going to go ahead and start this one. We are in luck. Remember, because we are using the ratio test, the absolute values really don't matter much to us. Uh, sorry, the absolute values really kind of make this alternating part right here kind of mute for us because everything's going to be positive anyways, so we don't have to worry about it. Whew. All right, so <clears throat> we wanted to get the next term, and that's going to be this x to the n plus 1 over 6 to the n plus 1. Now, we're going to divide by the previous term or the original term. So uh, I'm just going to invert and multiply. So that's my original term is just this x to the n over 6 to the n. Right, that's sorry. That's this x to the n over 6 to the n. So I'm just going to divide it by that. Divide by that. And that becomes 6 to the n over x to the n. And again, this has to be less than 1. You want this. You need to have that because otherwise we're not using the ratio test like it's meant to be. So make sure you put that less than 1. Simplifying it, just using a little bit of algebra. I can take this x to the n plus 1. Oops, that is a weird looking n on bottom. It almost looks like a 2 there. Sorry about that. There we go. So we're going to take this x to the n plus 1, divide it by the x to the n. Again, there's one more x on top, so that means we're going to have x on top. Looking at the 6s, we have 6 to the n on top, 6 to the n on bottom, n plus 1 on bottom. But again, we have that plus 1n down there, so we have one more 6 on the bottom. So I'm just going to put a 6 on the bottom there, so I get x uh, over 6. And that's going to be less than 1. Oh, wow, this one turns out super duper nice. We are going to factor out anything that does not have an n. We're only interested as n goes to infinity, not the x. So I can factor out this entire x over 6. And that's going to give me the absolute value. Oops, sorry, I'm going to go black. That's going to give us the absolute value of x over 6 times the limit as n goes to infinity, and if I factor all that out, I'm only left with 1, and that has to be less than 1 for us right there. All right, so that, the limit as n goes to infinity for 1 is just 1. Now, don't forget, we do wind up with this absolute value here because we don't know what the x is, so that has to stay absolute value. The 6 is always positive, so I don't need it for that. When I rewrite what's left, we're going to get the absolute value of x over 6 is less than 1. Therefore, we can say the absolute value of x is less than 6. Now, if you saw my previous video, that 6 is my radius. What it's telling us, so my radius is going to be 6. I'm already answering my question over there. What that radius is telling me is if we start at the center, I can go 6 units out to the right, and I can go 6 units out to the left. This is what we call our possible interval of in, uh, radius of in, uh, uh, interval of convergence. Excuse me. All right, but I'm going to solve it algebraically. We should know this from algebra 2. We're going to get x is less than 6 or greater than negative 6. So this is my possibility. Now, here's the problem. 
with the uh, ratio test. You might recall from a previous unit, the ratio test says if the radius is less than 1, the series will converge. If the radius is greater than 1, sorry, if, if the ratio is greater than 1, we will diverge. But it never says anything about equaling 1. And we talked about that. That's saying that this is going to be inconclusive. We really don't know what it's going to be. So because of that, I know my answer is going to go from negative 6 to positive 6. What I don't know is, will the endpoints or those 6s, will those work? And to do that, we have to test our endpoints. And this is the part most students tend to forget. So my first endpoint is negative 6. We plug that into the original series. This becomes negative 1 to the n plus 1. We're going to get negative 6 to the n over 6 to the n. Now, this negative 6 to the n, I can rewrite this as negative 1 to the n times 6 to the n. Remember, if you have trouble with the algebra, there's an algebra step here. If you want to, there's an algebra step here. So let's go and take a look at that. This helps. If this is really saying negative 1 times 6 to the n, and my rule says I can distribute the powers, and that's how we get that negative 1 to the n times 6 to the n. All right, algebra, it's everywhere you need to be. Now, this does make something really nice because the 6 to the n's cancel. And this is negative 1 to the n plus 1. This is negative 1 to the n. This is an alternating series right there. So what does this become on the very top? We're going to get from 1 to infinity, and this is really negative 1 to the 2n plus 1. Well, this is always odd, and negative 1 to an odd power is just negative 1. So the question is, will this converge or diverge? So now we have to test. Will this new series converge or diverge? So I'm going to, take the, I'm going to use the nth term test. The limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 is negative 1. This will diverge by nth term test. Well, what does that mean? x equals negative x cannot be negative 6. So let's try x equals 6 now. n equals 1 to infinity. Again, negative 1 to the n plus 1. But now this becomes just 6 to the n. Remember, my original was way up here at the very top, x to the n. I'm just replacing that x with 6 over 6 to the n. And there we go. That is going to cancel. And I'm left with my new series, n equals 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n plus 1. And I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of uh, negative 1 to the n plus 1. Now, it looks like it's alternating, and it does alternate, but this will oscillate. It's just going to go be between negative 1 and 1. So this oscillates. And which again does not equal zero, so this will diverge by nth term test. So again, positive six doesn't work either. So when I go back up to my answer up here now, when I get my final interval, I can't include negative six and I can't include positive. I can't include negative six, I can't include positive six. So I'm just gonna keep it as the lesson symbols. And those are my answers. This is really not hard, but it is tough. I mean, it's a lot of points on the AP and on tests. And remember, the whole idea is we are trying to make that sure that, that we can use this Taylor polynomial to approximate some function that we're going to come up with later on. And we want to guarantee that that function converges. And this is the test we use it. Last one, number, number 21. Same thing, I want to find the center. I want to find the radius. And I want to find the interval. So if I look over here, here I have this x minus 4 to the n plus 1. Ah, there is my center. Remember, my center is always x minus c to the n. So here, our center is just 4. Oh, that's nice. So now we're going to do our uh, uh, ratio test to get the radius. Take the limit as n goes to infinity. Again, we don't have to worry about the oscillating part here because we're taking that ratio test. So what we're going to get is this x minus 4 to the n plus 
2, convince yourself that's correct, over n plus 1 times 9 to the n plus 1. I'm going to flip it, not n times 9 to the n, over x minus 4 to the n plus 1. And again, this is going to be less than 1. Simplify a little bit. We get the limit as n goes to forever. And when we simplify, this is x minus 4 to the n plus 2. And I get this x minus 4 to the n plus 1. Again, there's one more on top because that plus 2. So on top, we get this x minus 4 to the, oops, sorry, to the 1, excuse me. And let's take a look at the n's. Well, this n and this n plus 1 can't cancel. So I get n on top and I get n plus 1 on bottom. Looking at the 9, I'm going to wind up at the 9 on bottom because there's one more. There's 9, nine to the n plus 1 on bottom. So I get 9 on bottom, and that has to be less than 1. That's the hardest thing we have to do in this whole homework right here. All right, so for our next step, anything that does not have an n, we're going to factor that out. And this becomes the absolute value of x minus 4 over 9 times the limit as n goes forever of n over n plus 1 has to be less than 1. And again, this just becomes 1. When we take the limit, n over n, that's just the ratio. That's our ratios. Uh, so we just that just becomes all 1. And what we're left with is the absolute value of x minus 4 over 9 is less than 1. Multiply by the 9, therefore we're going to get the absolute value of x minus 4 is less than 9. Remember, this 9, that is my radius. We're saying that the distance from the center is less than 9. So my radius here is 9. Identify that. On the AP, you can get a point for that. In college, all the girls will go crazy if you can just find that radius of convergence. So now we're going to get our interval. To get the interval, we're just going to solve an Algebra 2 question. We're saying x minus 4 is less than 9 but greater than negative 9. Solving it, add, we get 13 and, and positive 5. So there is my possibility. But now we got the hard point part. We have to test the endpoints right here. Testing the endpoints, we're going to pick 5 first. And if we do that, we go from n equals 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n plus 1, plug in 5, we get negative 1 to the n plus 1. Because uh, 5 minus 4, 5 minus 4, excuse me, is positive 1. That's kind of embarrassing. Sorry about that. There we go. Over. Hold on. Over n times 9 to the n. That was my daughter. She's world famous TikToker. All right. Now, when we plug this in. Ah, I did make a mistake. There we are. It should have been a. Negative 5. There we go. There we go. It should have been negative 5, and that's going to become a, um, when we plug it in, negative 5 minus um, 4, that should become a negative 9 to the n plus 1. I am so sorry about that. All right. So let's simplify this algebraically. This is a really tough one. We're going to get this negative 1 to the n plus 1 times 9 to the n plus 1. Now, when we reduce this, sorry, time distracted me. Sorry, when we reduce this, again, we're going to wind up with the following. n equals 1 to infinity. And again, this should be a negative right there. 1 to infinity. This is going to become negative 1 to the 2n plus 1. And um, the 9 is going to become, we can write this as 9 to the n times 9, the 9 to the n's cancel. And what's going to be left on top is a 9 over n. All right, so we don't have to do too much for this one because all we really have to kind of know is, remember, this is just going to generate odds. Therefore, this is not alternating anymore. 
So that's a non-alternating series. So this is going to be our P series. If we look down below, we can say that this P is 1. Therefore, this will diverge by P series. So X cannot be negative 5. All right, testing the other endpoint, X equals 13. We can go from 1 to infinity. We get negative 1 to the N plus 1. And plugging in 13, be careful, we get 9, uh, 13 minus 4, which is 9. So this becomes 9 to the uh, <coughs> n plus 1 over n times 9 to the n. All right. When we reduce the top, again, we'll get 9 to the n times 9. The 9 to the n's cancel. And what we're left with is the following, n equals 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n plus 1 times 9 over n. And this is alternating. So we have to say our mantra. Anytime something alternates, we say our mantra. The series alternates, decreases in magnitude, and the limit equals 0. Therefore, this will converge by alternating series. We're going to say a little mantra there. Let me write, write, convert, make it look a little bit nicer. This will converge by an alternating series. So x can be 13. So when we go back into our interval, way up here, we're going to have less, greater than negative 5, less than 13, but we can include 13. And there is our final answer. All right. Hope you enjoyed the video. Smash that like button. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.